Okay, uh, welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Battlefield. I'm your host, Echo Limits. We're calling this one a brand new year, and we're starting off with the crew. This is the crew for now. Flagfire, tell these people who you are. Hey everyone, it's Flagfire. Um, I do a lot of stuff related to Battlefield speculation, historical, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, you can find me on YouTube at youtube.com slash Flagfire Gaming, and increasingly on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Flagfire. Awesome. Um, today, as always, Mambo B. Yep. Welcome, guys. Welcome back to another new year here in the podcast. I'm Mambo B. Uh, you can find me on Twitch. I really enjoy squad play, whether it's on Battlefield, Star Wars, or Fortnite. You can check me out, twitch.tv forward slash Mambo underscore B. Awesome. And I'm your host, Echo Limits. That's spelled E K O L I M I T S. I'm a Twitch.tv streamer and uh, the host of this show. Now, uh, I'm excited because we had a podcast for an entire year, gentlemen. An entire year. Yeah. Isn't that, that's, that's amazing. Just the fans of Battlefield that have come through for the podcast, the amount of people who've uh, been a part of this community is huge to me. It means a lot. So thank you guys for tuning in. If you are watching the recording, because there's many of you guys that do watch it on Flax channel on YouTube, make sure you comment. Let us know what you think. Join the conversation. Spike the like. I don't know. I think that's what you guys say, right? <laughs> spike the like? I don't know. <laughs> like spikes or something. But we appreciate it anyway. Um, for uh, those of you guys also watching maybe on iTunes, uh, we, do, we do share the podcast on iTunes. And now it's possibly on Google Play. Um, I'm working on that stuff. New Year, you know. Um, nice. You can send us your questions at the Let's Talk Podcast at Gmail dot com. Um, so yeah, this this is a recorded video podcast. If you're not watching the video stuff, you're missing out on the chat. The Twitch chat is usually lit with a bunch of emotes. Pretty fun stuff. Okay, as always with this podcast, I first introduce the topics and then we're gonna go. But this is a unique podcast where. Uh, you guys who watch live get, get to uh, join in on a conversation. And ultimately, these aren't topics we just kind of, you know, like, oh, well, this is a topic and you, you got to talk about this. The way we work on this podcast is everybody comes with a discussion topic that they feel passionate about. And I feel like that's worked as a forum over here. Uh, so the first topic will be by Flack and its expectations from the new DLC that's going to be after January apocalypse. Mm -hmm. I think yes. it's appropriate to talk about it now because they're probably beginning development or like somewhere, right? I don't know. I, I really don't know. I'm I'm not sure how early they start working on that or anything. So hopefully it's early enough for us to talk about and give them some good ideas. You know, uh, the next topic will be by Mambo. Do you think daily assignments could be a good addition to want to play Battlefield daily? Really interesting. And my topic uh, is, what are other ways DICE can reward players with battle packs? I don't know about you guys, but I like battle packs. I'm a weirdo. Um, so those are the topics. Uh, and I think, do we need anything else for the new year? Of course, if you haven't uh, heard, Izzy is uh, now moved on from the podcast. So we will be filling in his role new year. We're looking for somebody in the, in the background. We already have some things going on. Uh, and some guests lined up, but for the meantime, it is us three on here. Anything else you want to fill them in with? <laughs> no, let's All get right. into it. Let's get into it. You're here for the yeah. podcast. All right, Flack, take it away. Your topic. All right, so for uh, the first topic here, you know, it's a... Uh, it's 2018. We've seen, you know, I, I think most, if not all, of what we're going to get in uh, Battlefield's third DLC, Turning Tides. So at this point, we've all, you know, been able to see the next two maps that are coming sometime this month with uh, Zibriga and uh, Hello Galand Bite. Um, if you haven't seen those, there's vids on my channel about them, uh, including gameplay, all that kind of fun stuff with the uh, with the CTE, so we've been able to see that. But one thing that we don't know a lot about right now is the final DLC, which is Apocalypse. And uh, I want to pull up the little blurb that is on uh, the Battlefield website about it, because this is like literally all the info that we have for 
apocalypse. It says, go over the top in the most infamous battles of World War I. Conquer bitterly contested ground with brutal tools and unique weapons. So it's like, that's all we know. Um, but I wanted to, to talk about it. I've been doing a lot of vids lately on, you know, potential things that could be in the DLC. So I will probably speak a little bit to that uh, in terms of like what I think would be in there specifically with weapons and vehicles and that kind of stuff. Uh, but, you know, really, I want to look at expectations and what Echo and, and Mambo have to say about, you know, what they'd like to see in that final DLC for Battlefield 1. All right, yeah. Flack, I'm just going to throw your uh, your YouTube channel. I mean, do you have a, a easy URL link? Because I found, like, a YouTube link that's probably, like, weird. But uh, I feel like people in the chat, if you haven't checked out Flack, uh, Flack's YouTube channel, you should specifically because he's made like two really awesome so far videos on this topic and just when you look at some of these I, I, um maybe like just looking at these vehicles that are possible and they're not in world war one right now i mean like i'm not in the uh, battlefield one but um there's such so much content there's so many possibilities right. that they've they could add in apocalypse that's the interesting exciting thing to talk about because it's limitless, really, right? They're, they're very vague in what's going on there. They are. And, you know, even on the, the, the videos that I've done, I've left out, you know, a good chunk of stuff that, you know, is available to reach out and grab. It's just I looked at it and said, mm, I don't know how that would work in, in the weapon meta of Battlefield 1, you know, or how that would work with the existing vehicles there, you know, because from a, a game development standpoint, right, you, all, you always want to be coming from the place of how do I create something that is you know more uh compelling and different from what already exists in the game so i'm trying to go through the list and say oh all this stuff is is crazy and would actually provide a, a more unique experience right oh, yeah. so uh, i saw i saw the vehicle video you made and it was <laughs> just like some of these vehicles had very interesting thing especially that vehicle you said that was like an armored truck that had two turrets that both could rotate so the mm -hmm. driver, it's it'll be so much like exactly like what Battlefield 4 was, because when you had, were in a tank in Battlefield 4, the driver had a 360 rotation of a tank turret, and the, the vehicle um, uh, gunner literally had a 360 as well. And this was like the yeah. first time they ever de designed that on a vehicle. And so if they added that vehicle, that'd be like an interesting thing there too, you know? It it would be, and it's something. It's like I I think the armored cars are kind of unappreciated in in battlefield one yeah they, you know, they, they, they did add the garfunkel truck the garfunkel truck yeah i can't pronounce it the 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 poodle off garford right um but it's like you know if, even some of the 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 less armored kinds of of uh, armored vehicles in there like you just don't see them used all that much um, and I think it'd be neat to kind of draw some attention back to that, show people that it's like, you know, oh, moving from objective to objective in an armored car can actually be a really beneficial and smart thing to do, or using it to flank the enemy, um, you know, and, and get your squad to spawn behind enemy lines is a, is a cool way to do it. But, you know, looking at that, looking at some of the tanks that are uh, available out there, you got that really big uh, Fiat 2000 Italian tank uh, that could be like a potential behemoth. And it's like, we don't know, are we going to get any more behemoths in, in Battlefield 1? Or are, are they done with it? You know, nobody's really said you, anything about that. You know, when you said expectations, uh, I have like, <clears throat> there's some baseline expectations and there's some wishful thinking, right? Mm -hmm. For me, baseline, at this point, I want a behemoth, I want an elite class, and I want mm -hmm. four maps. Those are my baseline expectations. You know, that's something I think I'd really like to see uh, in particular because we haven't had a new behemoth since the French DLC. Yeah. You know, the, the Char 2C was the last behemoth that we had, and it's a it's a big tank. So it's like, does Dice want to add another big tank as a behemoth? Um, I don't know. Uh, and if they do, it's got to be compelling in some kind of way, um, aside from just being a, a giant tank, right? Um, but it's something that it's like, I really would like to see that. Um, and I don't know if DICE is just thinking, I I don't know if we want to add behemoths or we just want to reuse what we have in game with the train and the uh, the airship uh, in, in terms of that stuff. I, I don't know. But for me, it's like for this apocalypse thing, I want to see um, 
at least four maps, good solid maps like we saw with uh, They Shall Not Pass. I love those maps. I want to see uh, some real compelling and unique vehicles. And I really want to see some neat guns. Like this is the swan song of Battlefield 1 in terms of the DLC. Like this is if you're going to go crazy, now is the time to do it because you're never going to get that chance again unless they you know, come out with another sequel set in in World War One at some point, which I I don't know if, if, if that'll ever happen or not. So this is like, if you're going to bring it to Battlefield 1, now's the time to do it. So, um, yeah. You know, like, I didn't, I did not purchase a <coughs> premium when it came to uh, Battlefield 3. And I missed out, apparently, because Mambo, you always talk about Close Quarters is, is amazing. It wasn't And that was the last DLC for BF3, if I'm not mistaken, right? <coughs> No. So, no? No. There was a DLC after that. All right. Well, I mean, I thought about, like, this not, in Battlefield 1, a big thing is is the maps are very large. They don't. It's not a lot of small maps. And I would love for them to kind of, like, give us a close quarter DLC. Mm. And I feel like Apocalypse has that opportunity to be like, yes, 64 players in this close quarter, maybe in a town. Maybe, I don't know what these war places would be like, but expectations I, I now i'm in the wishful thinking like oh man i'd like some close quarter maps you know yeah we have port de Vaux, but it would be nice to have some more. In, well we had saritzen but the problem with saritzen is they 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 enclose you in uh if they would give us some side uh like flank routes so you can get go through the outside of the town like in the town and then back around that would keep the game from getting spawn camped or anything like that, and it keeps you on your toes, at least for Conquest. Mm -hmm. Sur Surreton is very <laughs> unique, you know, um, and that's part of what, you know, Flack was saying. Like, as a, de as a designer, you want to create new experiences but make them unique, you know? Um, and I felt like it was close quarter, but there was also, like, nothing around it, so it was a little like, open, and then you had the two towns. It's, yeah. a, it's an interesting design. Some people like it, some people don't, but... I it is unique. I love that map, and it's something like I'm. I'm on board with you, Echo. Where you're saying, you know, I want more infantry, more close-in kind of stuff. Like I love Fort Deville. You know, I'm also the person who loves Locker and Metro and <laughs> all of the infantry-focused maps. Where you know, it's just a giant cluster, right? Well, where, I think we're more infantry kind of guys. Both you, me, and Echo all yeah. flash love those infantry firefights because that's that intensity we look for right in the game it is that's and the fun if 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 we look at what we got with the russian dlc you know you've got much more wide open kind of maps like you've got galicia you've got volga river both of those are you know sprawling kind of sinai desert type of maps where it's right. like you've got lots of open space this is much more for you know, almost vehicular and uh, long range kinds of combat. So it's like with Apocalypse, like I want, you know, the gritty face to face kind of stuff. You know, if, if, if you're talking about brutal battles, right, it's kind of difficult to describe Galicia as a brutal battle. If you look at the map where it's like you got one guy sniping over here and another guy sniping over here and that's it, you know, um, so I'd really like to see, you know, things along the lines of, of what you're talking about. Um, and I'm, I'm curious what, what Mambo would like to see uh, in particular for Apocalypse. Well, the, like Echo said, there's expectations and there's best wish, you know, your, your wish list. Expe expectations would be, yes, improvised weapons, more of the melee. Uh, uh, Yes, four maps, preferably five. Um, uh, at least. Well, you know, what would two you do with the per, fifth map? Yeah, two new weapons per class, you know, at least, and a lot of improvisation. Uh, and then wishful thinking. I want a dual wielding knives, kind of like Lawrence of Arabia mission in the Battlefield 1, where she spins them. And I think. I think she had two knives, like they were Turkish knives. I don't know. I have to kind of go back and remember that. But a dual wielding knife melee would be really nice, if wishful thinking. Um, some better turret fixed positions, like some machine gun turrets. I always like that feeling of holding down the enemies as they push in. If you're thinking of 
trench warfare. And it just doesn't seem like they do a l- really good job in battlefield sometimes of creating those fixed turret positions that the enemy's got to take out yeah. uh, in order to push forward and make them where you don't just get killed the second you get on them. Like make them really hardened fixed turret positions. And then that would help uh, me thinking as about, you know, what sets Battlefield apart. We look for the stuff that they, when Battlefield 1 was released, you could think back of, the, of EA Play a couple of years ago, and uh, they got the most liked video game on YouTube, right? Well, they brought that that nostalgia out and that brutality. So I'm thinking ap- Apocalypse, experimenting, uh best wishes would be very brutal melees i want some really cool melees so 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 instead of like this right now dice has added a lot of melees to the game but we mm-hmm. discussed this in lo- last podcast where <clears throat> i feel like it's always the same animation you know it's and it's always the same length animation so like what would i'm t- are you trying to say like if they're gonna make new melees give them brand new animations Mambo? yeah like a different animation. Like, that's why I say dual wielding knife or... Because that would be uh, way different, right? Right. Not just flip somebody over that's laying on the ground and hatchet them. You know, yeah. I want to I see something... Uh, like, some of the elites, I stabbed somebody with an elite. Uh, the new elite, uh, the one that does the mortars. Oh, okay. And he held it, and it made the guy look at him for a little bit. Like, that was pretty crazy. Like, whoa, this guy just went psycho in his face. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> He was holding him. He's like, look at me. Like he was holding him there. Like, dude, what does he have a Private specific, Ryan? Does he have a specific, yeah. unique animation to him? I never meleeed with him. No, but uh, it seemed like he did hold it longer than normal. Like, whoa, this guy just sat there and made him look at him while he was twisting the knife. He was like, ugh, I want to see some more brutal. You know, nice. maybe the chariots uh, idea. Uh, you know, Flack talked about vehicles. Uh, that light tank with the double turning turret seems pretty cool, but um, maybe the train could could chart in a, a, a couple vehicles if you get the train. We haven't seen what trains were really used for. They were used for hauling things more than anything. Mm-hmm. So the other teams should get two extra tanks or a bunch of more horses or the train stops and the doors open and freaking tanks come, cars come flying out, armored cars, something cool like that. Bro, if a train came in and they had one of those French DLC siege guns in the back on like a flatbed on it, that'd be cool. Right. Those yeah. French DLC big guns, that, that those are pretty cool. For that to be portable on a train, be, be unique. Oh yeah. 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 That'd be cool too. You know. Um. Before we started, you know, actually broadcasting the podcast today, uh, we we did talk a little bit about, um melee weapons and kind of how things could be different. Um, And I talked about, because I'd seen it in one of the concept arts for Battlefield 1, is a trench pike. So basically you have kind of a run-of-the-mill pike, which is, you know, a long stick with a a metal blade on it. But uh, in World War I, when that actually uh, appeared on the battlefield, it was kind of cut down so it was short and you could hold it with two hands and it was supposed to be, you know, useful in the trenches in some way. And... Uh, I saw that in the concept art. I was like, oh, that would be so awesome to have a weapon like that where you could bring kind of bayonet charging mechanics to a melee weapon, but not have it be a bayonet. And we kind of talked about this prior to the podcast, how, you know, this could provide a new experience to people who are used to playing as support because they don't have a bayonet attachment for any of their guns. Um, They could use the trench pike and, and charge an enemy, um, but then they'd be penalized where they'd have to switch back to their regular weapon, you know, if they if they missed the charge and it would take more time um, to do that, um, right? Yeah, so so cool, that could be something there. How cool would that be as if you meleeed somebody with a pike, like meleeed them and then did a charge and bayoneted, like impaled somebody with all in the same, like, Mm-hmm. kill streak like you kill somebody with a pike or a knife and then you turn around and run at somebody and stick them down to the ground that would be crazy that would be pretty cool and it we, would also we do be... have oh, i'm sorry i was going to comment on both both a wine in the chat he's talked about imagine though a button to press in between the attack to be able to counter it and take half damage or even stab him back um that was in battlefield 4 and uh that counter knife was dreaded by many people <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
I don't know if they should bring that back in uh, in that one. Yeah. yeah. But go on, Flack. Um, I was going to say, it would bring a, a, a more unique experience because you'd have the option then to take the bayonet off of your gun. Um, so you could have a faster ADS time, but you'd sacrifice... Uh, you know, having to switch back to your weapon, you know, after you you use the the trench pike, so there could be kind of a balance there. But um, you know, it, it it provided unique experience. I saw it in the concept art, so I'm like, oh, that would be cool if they put that in there, you know. So uh, somebody's like, bayonet charges are overrated. Yeah, you know, I I think they're fun. They're they're useful against. Uh, but it gives Battlefield, elites. yeah, the, they're a perfect counter to elites. That's one of those things you play Star Wars Battlefront, and it's like, oh, there's no elite to, uh, you know, counter to Luke. <laughs> yeah, but at least in Battlefield, these elites do have counters, and you know, gas grenades many times. But the bayonet charge is really good, and also it gives Battlefield One its, it's like flair. You know, how can you mm -hmm. how can you not have a bayonet charge in World War One? I mean, I like that it's in there. I know getting killed by a bayonet charge sometimes is like, oh, dang, though. You know? <laughs> I'm not good with it. I don't play with it. I'm terrible. I actually had a thing the other day, and it, it, it like, never happens. But uh, I heard someone bayonet charging at me. I swung around and bayonet charged back, and I won the bayonet charge. And that's it's, so... it's the person who bayonets last wins yes. the charge, Isn't right? that called a no-scope bayonet? Uh, <laughs> it, it might be. I don't, I, I don't know, but... <laughs> It was a pretty fun experience, but it's something. It's like they nerf the bayonet charge. I don't think people will get uh, upset about it. You know, if they put that in the game because it's like pretty much anybody can already bayonet charge. It's not going to suddenly increase the amount of people who bayonet charge because most people probably play with a bayonet attached to their gun. So if they were going to use it, uh, they would just go and use it. It's just kind of a right. kind of an interesting thing. Hold on. Here's a, here's a crazy thought. Nim in the chat says can't throw knives though. What about throwing things in Apocalypse? I mean, this is like, this is supposed to be right. the craziest the last, of crazy. Right? The last thing that Battlefield did that made my jaw drop after the initial release was the, the impalement of the horses when they started jousting people. They started, that was cool. That made my chin be like, what? That really give it a unique, like, mm -hmm. wow, this is awesome. And even today, when I do that on Battlefield, I still it looks so I can't cool. get enough of it. It's yeah. like, I cannot get enough of it. So you bring that up, and that's the kind of animation I'd like to see with that trench pike. But oh, it'd be yeah. like first person, really close up kind of stuff. Like that or would carrying be carrying somebody. No, 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 flag, flag. Pick them up and carry them. Yeah, why not? Yeah, be flag, crazy. What if out. what if you what if you went from first person into third person as you piked someone? That would be cool. Like however however they do it, if they decide to do it, you know, we've been talking about animations for things like make them brutal. You know, it's supposed to be brutal. Right. Make those special animations that make it feel like, wow, like Mambo's talking about, where it's like the first time you you got someone with the uh, with the lance on the cavalry, it's like, what? Like, that's a, they put that in How the game. How about just a, you know? a general pick somebody up and carry them 10 feet and throw them down and then bayonet them? Or, <laughs> that's... I, that that will feel so bad. Imagine you're playing, you get picked up, and for for like ten seconds you can't press any button because you're being manhandled. It's like ah. Oh. <laughs> and this guy just throws you down on the ground and knifes you. It'd be like oh man. But they could do something like that, you know. I don't know. There's a lot. Hand to hand they can combat. Do. It's definitely yeah. um, an an interesting DLC because it doesn't have a theme, so they can do so much. I do, uh, for every, all you guys watching, whether you're watching a recording or you, you're in a chat right now and everything else, there's so much to kind of speculate about this. Flax made awesome videos. I do recommend you check those guys, uh, those videos out on YouTube, especially because, I mean, um, maybe in the future, uh, we'll figure out a good way on, on this podcast to show you some of that footage. Uh, mm -hmm. I have to get better at this, you know, new year, new podcast. We're going to, we're going to do things. Um, that would be a cool thing because just you seeing this history is a whole new level adds to this discussion. So yeah, uh, I gotta say, can we uh, do closing thoughts on this uh, before we switch on to the next topic? Um, when are we looking for release of Apocalypse? That is a good question, and <clears throat> I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. EA, uh, play, really? EA plays in June, right? 
So you got to look around March. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm thinking probably March we'll get some kind of official announcement for it. They I, I don't think they want it to run into because I, I, all of us in the oh. in the podcast are here. Like we think they're going to announce the next Battlefield at EA Play or uh, E3. So yeah, I I think they're going to announce Apocalypse somewhat before. Uh, we we get to that point, so I'm yeah I'm thinking right around like March or April or something like that. We'll we'll finally get a a good feel for what's going to come out for that. All right, all right. Um, my my closing thing on the whole apocalypse expectation is I hope they they at least do deliver the basics. You know, uh, there's so much that could be talked about, but I I definitely want obviously I I doubt they're not going to bring us four maps. That seems like a a track record. You know, uh, I don't I know because it's it's really crazy. So I don't know if they'll be able to string two operations because it seems like they're, they're going to be very epic battlefields. But I don't know because Stice has always had a stance on operations has to follow a story. Mm-hmm. So when it doesn't, even though the maps might be really cool for it, they won't make an operation. So I don't know if they'll make two operations. I'll be okay with one. Um, but, you know, I'd, I'd like to have those four maps. Please give us a behemoth, brand new something. I, I'd love that. And, and a new elite. I have fun with those. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, um, Mambo, did you want to add something to that? Or was that were those your closing thoughts? I don't know. Yeah, that's my closing thoughts. Awesome. We're going to move on to the next topic. This one was picked out by Mambo. Hopefully, you guys yep. enjoyed that conversation. Of course, if you have a question or anything else, uh, you can save those to the end of the uh, podcast. We do some a chat session. That's when we all just kind of engage with everyone who's here live. If you're watching the recording, all that stuff, I will remind you. The questions, you can send them to the Let's Talk Podcast at gmail.com if you're watching on iTunes. And if you're watching on YouTube, of course, join the conversation down below. That's it. Mambo, hit us with the topic. Uh, yeah, um, I'm game not just Battlefield, but other games. And a lot of other games incorporate daily assignments. You know, I know in Star Wars, they give you a daily loot crate. In uh, Fortnite, they give you daily assignments. In other games as well. So I'd like to see that kind of daily thing carry over to Battlefield. Uh, And one of the things in particular with, say, Call of Duty, they have this social space, is my thinking as a daily assignment to uh, give recognition to people that accomplish daily assignments on a, say, a weekly basis, you know, and... The, the main menu in Battlefield sort of gives a recognition to content creators, but I was thinking maybe DICE could go one step further and give recognition to the people that are loyal to their game uh, and call them war heroes and say, hey, this person, uh, name one of the maps, say Galicia or whatever. So it was a war hero on Galicia with an epic comeback and show a squad that got a squad five times in a row throughout the week and then name them just for one hour and then cycle it through somebody else that you got data. I'm sure they cl- capture all the data as far as kills, uh, maps played, player count. They got all that data. So why not just put it on the main menu for something like that? Just give a little bit of replay value back to the people that are loyal to the game. What are your thoughts, Echo, Flack, on daily assignments or recognition to the people that are still loyal to Battlefield? I like the idea. I like the idea of having something brand new. Um, part of my topic later on stems from this issue is I liked operations campaigns because I can get in and get my daily battle packs and I was playing for something and, and, and it was fun, right? So it, the battlefield to itself is fun on its own, but having something to go for, it just adds to the experience. Um, you, we have Broken Helmet in the chat and he kind of said a replay mode. Like... You know how how uh, they do that in Call of Duty, I believe now. And Overwatch. Overwatch play of the game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, displaying someone's play of the game, if they, they could probably figure out. I mean, just look at uh, kill streak. Call, Call of Duty does that too now. At, at the end of every match, they'll so be like, yeah. you know, Medal right. of Honor or what or whatever they call it. Um, so, like Mambo said, feature one of your players in there <laughs> and let them know when you feature them. Don't like just feature them and have no idea they were featured. Right, send them a message. Yeah, email, like bro, say, you're going to you be know, featured at this time for tell being your friends, a war hero. You know, go make a, a snap a picture. I mean, that's exciting. You're in the game. I can't begin to tell you guys how uh, how 
like excited I was when my video was in Battlefield. Like it meant so much to me. I was like, wow, you know? So they could make that experience, not just for YouTubers and Twitch streamers, they, to have the experience for just anybody who's playing the game, that would go a long way for your community. I like that idea. All right. What do you got, Flack? Uh, <clears throat> I'm in that boat too, where it's, uh, you know, real neat to feature, you know, players who do, you know, pretty neat stuff who, who get that, that crazy multi-kill or, you know, that kind of thing. I, I, and, and, and that is something that Battlefield does, you know, if you log in and you see the dashboard in Battlefield 1. It, it's, it's not just creator videos. Like, they do actually put fan videos up there that, that have... Oh, like Uncharted. Know. Remember Uncharted 4 puts a little video in the bottom left, and they show, like, they cycle through mm -hmm. players that do these amazing plays, and they show it on the main menu, a little window at the bottom called it, uh, they call it the little... Oh, yeah, yeah, they called it TV. And you could yeah, turn yeah, it yeah. off. You could turn it on. That'd be great to cycle through videos of people doing amazing things as long yeah. as they send it in. And they and, have, they have, like, how many, how many things does uh, Battlefield post on their Twitter page? Like, amazing this and amazing that. Like, they have yeah. so many cool little videos. And they kind of already do. Um, not all videos are YouTuber and Twitch streamers on, on their thing. Sometimes mm -hmm. they're really quick tidbits that they do share on their social medias. But it would be very interesting to, like... Um, like Mambo said, to make it like a daily thing, like, oh, if, if um, oh, the way I thought about it is like, you know, you got bounties and stuff, you know, um, in mm -hmm. Call of Duty, like, um, they don't have to do that for just like, oh, recognition. Some people like XP, you know, like, oh, you get extra XP if you did, you know, X amount of revives or whatever. Right now they do... Um, What's that they called? Community missions. Challenges. Yeah, it, it's kind of weekly, kind of not. I mean, is is I know there is a calendar as to when <laughs> things go live, but I check community missions almost every day. Whenever mm -hmm. I stream, when I play it, I check it, and I'm like, oh, nothing's here. Oh, something's here. Like, I, it just seems not consistent. And when you're not consistent, people don't understand. I don't mm -hmm. even understand. Well, and this will kind of cut into Echo's topic a little bit. But for me, you know, I, I I really like the idea of more involvement, like Mamba was saying about, you know, showcasing people in the community, you know, the everyday people who are just playing it and having fun, you know. Um, that's really cool. They should do more of that. And I think they do a pretty decent job of it, but there's always, you know, room for more ways to get uh, involved with that, more community interaction, right? Um but in terms of having like a daily challenge for things, um, you know, right now they've got the the weekly challenges, and I've been saying this for like since the game came out. It's just like for me, I look at them, I'm like, don't care, uh, just just not appealing to me. You know, maybe it is for other people who are just like, I see that challenge. I'm the kind of guy who wants to, you know, go beat that challenge. You know, prove to myself I can do it. Um, is it do you think it's because the challenges are not fun no i think for me it's the challenges don't have any real you know carrot on the end of the stick for me you know right. it's like i'll go do it it's like ooh, i get 5000 xp what does that get me you know like i'm level what like 110 yeah. or something give in us the game. a puzzle piece on one of those challenges <clears throat> you see people go crazy for that yo you know see now that's that's the other thing is i've always been a fan of tiered things and uh if you're gonna make things make them simple to get medium hard to get and really difficult to get so if you mm -hmm. do challenges i would hope that dice does that like okay so the easy challenge for today is you know five revives you get 1000 xp and that i know flack maybe mambo myself that don't mean anything because we're top level whatever we got plenty xp but there might be that one guy who's like yo i just got the game oh five revives cool i'm gonna get some bonus xp right mm -hmm. Then uh, the medium level will be like, hey, sure, you can get some scraps. And scraps are cool. You get your battle packs eventually, blah, 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 blah. People might play for scraps. And then the top tier level is like, yo, no, you get the pack. And then in the pack, you might be, you know, superior or something. Like, well, yeah. that would be, you know, next level. But make that one hard and yeah. people will chase it. And you and, only and give them 24 hours? Mm. That's something... Uh... You know, I, I I know that there are people on different sides of it, but if we look back at the challenge that we had most recently, community challenge, where it was like 200 handgun kills. Yeah. 
Um, and before that, it was like destroy what, like seventy five vehicles or a hundred vehicles or or something like that. Yeah, I didn't do it to get the knife that Echo talked about on on his stream. It was some uh, like what was the name of this knife? Like cuckoo. Yeah, I didn't get the cuckoo. The cuckoo was something different. I, no, I don't it was remember what the shotguns. Sh shotgun kills for the cuckoo is, yep. is what was it was. It? And yeah, it was, then it was three hundred though. Huh. Yeah, I never yeah. got it. I got and it. And it's too. like that was that was tough, but that was a challenge, and I really liked that. And the same thing for the two hundred pistol kills. To get that that holiday package uh, skin for the revolver, I don't even use. <laughs> but I was still like, I want it because it's a it's a super rare thing. Like you know, getting that in a in a pack is going to be really difficult. So it's like I'm I I really hope Dice is recognizing that people are responding to that uh, that that kind of reward and it being like you know you have to get two hundred handgun kills in order to get this skin or you have to get 300 shotgun kills like i'm glad they're difficult um and i know some other people are complaining because it's like it shouldn't be that hard you know like i because don't have that much it time starts to, play. to it teeters on the whole this might be tedious now rather yeah, you, than fun <clears throat> you, you you gotta find that balance right it's hard but i mean i'm enjoying it and even as somebody who plays assault i did not complete the mission for the tank skin because i just didn't have time to do it but I'm not, you know, particularly heard about it. That it's like, oh, I can't do that. Um, Ernie I'm Ball saying, uh, did you go onto the pistol only maps for the challenge? Like, I just ran around in regular maps with the with the boar chart pistol and just, you know, managed managed to do quite well with it. Um, but it was fun because it was a challenge. It's like all these other people are using main weapons, and I'm like, I'm gonna see how well I can do with this thing just to, you know, to match my skill against what they're doing with. You know, it's it's like fighting with one hand behind your back, right? It's right. Like, let's see how how difficult this really is. Playing with um, no sound on. Yeah, it, and it's like I feel like I earned it. You know. That's cool. And so that's that's where I'm at with that. It's like I I would love daily challenges. I would love any kind of challenge. It's just got to have something beefy behind it for me to be like I'm gonna go do it. You know. I think it, I think the key here is Dice needs to um, bring these daily challenges, but understand that. They, they're dealing with their player base as different types of people. So when you do these daily challenges, you have to variate them. You have to variate mm -hmm. them for the person who just got Battlefield, the person who plays um, twice a week, and the person who plays every day. Mm -hmm. It has to be the three different carrots. I, I feel like if you do cover those three bases with three different challenges per day or every two days, I don't know, um, then you're co covering your bases and you're making everybody happy and more people play your game. Constantly. Well, you wouldn't want them to see them do them randomly, like one day make it easy, one day make it harder, one day make no. it medium, one day make it easier, I, one day make it harder. I like the tiered idea because it gives you room to grow in the sense of like, yeah, I can do that first one, you know, okay. and then the week right. after you're like, oh, oh I, I got some more time. I could, yeah. I could push for this or like I'm getting better, you know, so I right. can go for that top tier thing. So, for instance, you got Battlefield is one of those unique games. It's got players playing like five hours a day some of them mm. then you got players who play like an hour or two a day and you got some players who just clock in for that one half hour because they're chilling you know i'm gonna do that so like they should tear off these um uh daily things it's like okay here's one you could do this you can get this superior battle pack but this will be like four hours five hours of play time you know like yo this is it and there mm -hmm. might be a time like like flax said like that person who just got the game but it's like this is his Saturday, and he's like, "All I want to do is play Battlefield." And it's like, "Yo, today I can go for a, a higher tier um, daily progression, daily uh, what do we call it again? Daily assignment. assignment. Yeah, uh, higher higher daily assignment because I have the time. You know, simply not every day will I have the time to do these top level tasks. Mm -hmm. But you know, some people might, some people won't. I think it adds variety to the game. Variety is good." Now, Mambo, I think you're going to enjoy this one because when you pose this question, I was sitting at home because, you know, I think about these topics so we have, um, so I'm prepared to talk about them. And one of the things I thought about is Fortnite. And Fortnite does divisions, right? It puts you in a division, but those aren't your friends. Those are just some random peeps, right? Right. So I thought about, like, I know Battlefield wants to do ranked. They want to do competitive. Um, I've always felt like there's a disconnect between the game we play and the game they consider uh, competitive, which was 
which is being built right now, Incursions. And I don't know if the people who play this game will also want to play Incursions because of its differences. The similarities, differences, and all that. We will have to find out when that releases. But I thought about this whole daily assignment thing is, I also like that there's divisions in Fortnite. So suppose this is a weekly division, right? It puts you with 100 players, and then, you know, you're playing Battlefield, you're earning points. I don't know, it could be on points, just who's, who's getting most points in X amount of games, time, whatever, right? So what, is, what, I, what I liked about that division thing is, is it keeps people playing together, and there's some leaderboard, and you, you're, you're trying to be better than the rest of them in there. But what you could do with that is, is take the top five people every week from each division and pull them into their own division. So these are people who play constantly, play really well. So now their division is now harder because they're higher level. And take the bottom right. people. You guys only play very casually, but you want you to still feel good about your division. You know, you still kind of care. You know, show them their division is an easier division. And, you know, people might move up and eventually you might try to tear off into like the diamond level division. You see what I mean? So it will keep... Uh, what I like about that idea is... This is like a daily incentive for people who care about the game a lot to keep playing because now they're in a diamond division. They want to stay in a diamond division, so they'll keep playing. You know, it's it's a it's like it's what feeds competitive nature in people. Mm -hmm. You know, these leaderboards and stuff, rather than always looking at the global leaderboard on some tracker website. Um, it would be nice to build that stuff in and kind of have that in ranked, and then you can. You know, you can do a lot of stuff. I think Fortnite does interesting things with their divisions. Could be a cool idea for as like a daily assignment thing, you know? Get top, right. get top. I don't know, 50% uh, in your division, you get 100 XP. Get top 25%, you get scraps. Get top 5% in your division, you get the battle pack. You see what I'm saying? Right. I'm with you. So that was that was my idea about the whole divisions, and you can tear them <laughs> off like Rainbow Six does or something. Coal, copper, one, two, three, four division, then you know silver, and then then golds, and then you eventually get to platinum, and you get to diamond. You know you're in a diamond division, and you know like that would be cool. I mean, one of the things that Battlefield lacks is um, skill based matchmaking. I I don't I they do some of it, and they also don't. Because you can join up servers, and at that point, the server doesn't know. You're, you, well, it knows your skill, but you, you're the one picking what server to play in. So if you're going to participate in this division, um, whole thing, whole idea of divisions, there would be like a ranked battlefield. So you would basically play with people from your division, uh, or plus or minus, you know, like you're going to be playing in a gold server rather than being in a copper server. I feel like Battlefield is one of those games that's not accessible to new people. Because sometimes a noob, noob will join in and, you know, he'll be in Mambo server and he'll be like, why is this Mambo dude running me over with a horse all the time? It's like he knows everywhere I am. You know what I mean? It's like, yo, but that's the truth. Mambo, we know the game better than they do. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like this would help DICE create the game so these people will get fed into, like, unranked servers or or a copper service because they start off in a copper division and you work your way up, you know? Mm. And it'll be friendly to the noobs. You won't have a, a, a god tier level player <laughs> like us go, going in there and mowing them down 100 kills looking like a hacker, you know? Right. Um, gets people upset. So Well, I said that in our last podcast. Uh, somebody mentioned Platoon Wars, Broken Helmet, and I said the one thing that... Um, uh, Killzone 2 did back in the day when they had a Killzone 2 game is they incorporated platoon matches right <laughs> into the menu of the game. So you got ranked gameplay with the platoons and, and non-ranked gameplay. You just join random matches. So it really give that platoon hunting out other platoon. The, the competitive guys want to play against other competitive <laughs> guys. As a streamer, Echo, Flack, you guys probably got platoons, people that got the same clan tags come mm -hmm. in your games and they give you a hard time, at least more than the other players, is because they know who Echo Limits is, they know who Flackfire is, they know who Mambo is, and they come in and say, oh, I'm from so-and-so uh, platoon, I'm going after that guy because I want to let them know who 
the God's clan is. I know who the God's clan is. They don't have to show off who they are, you know, but they want that recognition. Yeah. So, and it's understandable. So it's, yeah, it's, to put you in the same, you know, same rank, maybe say, hey, anybody <laughs> who's rank 75 to and up can play in this servers to get a daily assignment or I don't, I don't I, I think that's that's okay but the the rank system is be built on XP which you have XP boosters for and all this other stuff I know it'd be it'd be hard for them to figure out like you know how, how are you playing the objective kills per minute but there's definitely things that they can figure out they yeah. also they've also tried they have a skill um, value I haven't seen skill used in battlefield one as a value indicator because mm. they don't have their proprietary leaderboard anymore but you know, it exists. I'm sure somewhere in the back end they still uh, rank us based on our skills and stuff. I just think the whole division idea would help <clears throat> in, in your idea, Mambo, thinking about, like, giving people something to do daily. You know, you're, you're right. competing to be in that division. The, the daily thing might be... The division thing might be, like, a weekly thing when I think about it because daily might not work. You know, mm. the assignments we discussed might work, <clears throat> and I hope they do tier them because there are people who play in different type of levels, you know? But I don't know. It's a cool it's, discussion. It's it's interesting, and I mean, like, I like the idea of that being available. It's just something that is like I don't want to be forced to have to do that, you know. So I like the way Rainbow Six Siege does it, where there's unranked and there's ranked. Right. So and we would do the same. Can't, in, casual in, or or ranked. Yeah. In 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 the chat here, uh, Ariel is talking about, you know, I'm imagining a battlefield round with 64 pro players that know the game inside out. It's either going to be fun, or the try hard level is going to be unbearable. You know? But, but some some people like the try hard level. <clears throat> some some people do, but for me, it's like I don't play Battlefield for that. So it's like you would probably never see me on the rank thing, just because I don't care. <laughs> you know, like I'm in it to have fun. I play video games to have fun. Um, and right. you know, certain people, you know, really find enjoyment in oh, I'm doing better than that guy, uh, or I just won you know, MVP on the top tier thing, you you know, you get bragging rights, like, if that's what you're into, great. For me, I just, you know, do it to have fun. So, Sweet. For, Sweaty. for... Yeah, the sweats, I see... The sweaty get, all day. <laughs> yeah, the, we call them the sweats. They tend to get bored with the game that they're playing, because it's almost too easy for them. Mm -hmm. So, it's like, they want to play against people that make it har harder Look, for them. Ultimately, I think the idea is, make Give, give the players something to do. And there's so many, many, many players that play Battlefield with so many different likes. It's hard, but I, I'd like, like, mom, uh, like you guys are talking about, like, I'd like Battlefield to at least offer it, you know? Right now, they don't. They just offer you the base game. And right. literally, there are people who are competitive in the spirit. They're creating leagues. There's multiple leagues. Mm -hmm. There's multiple uh, like teams that do all this, you know. I mean, there's there's an interest, there's an interest. To bring this topic to a close, let's shift on over. I think uh, I'm not gonna do closing things, so I want to definitely get into this next conversation. This one's by me. What are other ways dice can reward players with battle packs? This topic basically is very related to what we're talking about, so that's why I didn't want to close it off with closing thoughts. We'll do that next. Uh, the reason I wanted to bring up this topic, and it was important to me, is because I legit enjoyed um, Operations Campaigns. I was, like, excited. That came out. I was like, oh, I want to sit down I in the morning, grind out the packs and play all that. Oh, I had so much to open. It was fun. And then they took it away. They took it away. And I'm like, why? You know? So I want to ask you guys and the chat and the internet community. If we had to think about more ways that dice can reward us with battle packs, what what do you think is fair to ask? I really like what you know you and Mambo were saying about you know different challenges for things and having that be a part of that challenge. You know, I like it where you play maybe what four games or five games and you unlock a battle pack. Um, like that, I like. I like the additional scraps that we get from that. At the same point, it would it would be really cool to have it, you know, uh, a challenge based thing uh, where you would unlock a battle pack if you completed X Y Z. You know, like you look at some of the weekly challenges, they are not easy. 
and they take a long time to do. I look at it like that would be enough for me to say, I want to try and chase that challenge. Um, and I don't think it would really dig too much into, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if, uh, how much money they're 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 making on battle pack purchases? You know, personally, I don't really see any reason to go buy one. Um, so, you know, trying to complete one of those challenges are the only ones. Like that's a major <clears throat> reason lots of people want to buy packs because the puzzle pieces are cool. Yeah, um, but I think tying them into those weekly challenges um, would make it way more interesting um, and way more compelling to actually try and chase those. What about, uh, did we get battle packs for completing the story campaign? No. We did not? I just I just platinumed the game after like a year and some change. I went back really? and I platinumed it. I streamed that too. People were like, what are you doing? I'm like, bro, I just want to platinum this, all right? Um, wow. You get skins. You do get skins. I got the Black Best skin and I got like, I believe, six other skins. There's a uh, revolver skin. There's a Howda pistol skin. There's a Russian rifle skin. Uh, oh, okay. Quite a few. There's a uh, Bene Mercia skin. I'm pretty sure I'm missing. Uh, How C hard was C96. It to do that? There, there, there's a uh, one of the revolver skins I think is in there too. And it's nice. The the auto revolver skin. Very nice. I like it. It's like a gambler. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It has like cards or something inspired. Um, yeah, yeah. How hard is it? Uh, I mean, it's not hard because YouTube exists. You know, you just look it up or or like Google it. Uh, I've ne I would never really try that like blind try to find all the codices and all that might be for somebody not for me i'm just gonna look at a youtube video and quickly do it and yeah take my little skins um but you know what i was thinking about this this is something we discussed once before is giving bounties per game like i like the idea of daily things you know um that you can you can strive for mm -hmm. uh, but i think you know it would be so much more fun to have per game kind of bounties. Um, one of the things that, you know, you play the game and you just play to win, but you might, you might want to incentivize people to do certain things within the game and try to reward them for it. For instance, like um, we talked about Battlefield, in my opinion, because it's, server browser based and stuff like that it has a hard time balancing teams a lot of times it's a big spanking from one side to the other right so why not incentivize people for instance what i've noticed is a lot of people try to quit on a team that's losing right so I, when you I team switch to the other team that's losing like and it, it's it, it's hilarious because that's one of the things, like, I don't need an incentive to go do. <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm just, I'm not being challenged. Right. I'm going to switch to the other team that's getting their butt kicked. Flack, bless your soul. You're, <laughs> you're better than the rest of us, all right? Uh, so here's the thing, though. Like, I feel like before you, you know, you press the quit button, before you press the quit button, if you are a good player and the team needs you, I mean, they can see your skill. Like, you know, I'm not saying get the, get the noob. Tell them, like, hey, bro, don't quit, man. They need you. They probably don't. But <laughs> um, if you are a player that's deciding to quit because things aren't going that way and you're about to press the quit button and they're already down four players or something. Didn't we talk what about if, this? If you switch teams, you, no, you should yeah, get yeah. a reward. Say, hey, but you can get a this. battle pack if you switch sides. Right. Now, now listen to this. This one I, I called, like, I, I wrote down a few, all right? So this one I called Perseverance. When you think about it, like, when you before you press the quit button, a, a pop-up says, like, bro, if you stay... And you help this team win, not just stay and just for no reason. And the team wins, you get a battle pack, bro. That'd be cool. Like, oh, and you can still say quit. No, no, no I'm good. I'm, I'm just quitting. I'll, these people are losers. But but if it's called persevere. You know, you stay, you get the battle pack. I had other ideas like perseverance battle pack. That'd be cool, bro. Like, why not? There's one that was the defect one. Like, hey, bro, the other team sucks. And if you die as, as a really good player on the other side, like, hey, if you defect to the other side, you know, there's a battle <laughs> pack waiting for you, you know? Can't yeah, beat them, join them. It's, it's interesting you bring that up because I had been playing uh, Tannenberg. And Tannenberg's thing automatically... Um, automatically uh, asks you it, it says teams are unbalanced you know if you if some if three players don't switch or something that'll result in a in a point penalty 
Um, so it's like you could switch um, if you wanted to get points, but for me, it's See, like, well, I'll just I'll just switch anyway. I don't I don't necessarily like punishing people in video games. Mm. You buy these things, like Flat said, you buy the game to enjoy it. Don't punish me because the you know team's not balanced. That's not my fault. That's your balancing system. I don't know, you know. But Battlefield doesn't technically have a balancing system. I know that there is something somewhere, but it's not prevalent, right? So let the players balance the game. Give them mm -hmm. some incentive. Persevere. If you if you help, but you have to win. For instance, if you deflect and you choose to get that, go for that battle pack, but you your team loses, you don't get the battle pack. You have to actually try to help them win. It's not a, a petty reward. You're the great player. Now you get a battle pack just because you sit there and you lose. No, you got to win. You see what I'm saying? I thought about a one that said support. We've discussed this once uh, about the whole Overwatch. Hey, bro, there's not enough support players or <coughs> medic players on the team. Mm. Like, literally, like, everyone's sniping and there's, like, one medic. We need another. <laughs> so it's like, here's an incentive. You're in a spawn screen. It'll be like, a uh, 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 alert pops up. Like, we need a medic. You do this and you get 30 revives. You get a battle pack. And you'll be like, yo, you'll see that guy be like... I have two syringes, bro. <laughs> you <know? laughs> like, you know, something cool like that. You don't necessarily give it away for free. You make people work for it. So that could be mm -hmm. like a support one. And then I thought about the last one I thought is a bounty one. Uh, uh, like, remember that high value target, HVT in Battle for 4? Mm -hmm, yeah. And it was kind of trash because it was a free wall hack because a commander just pointed on you with his finger, you know? High value target. But this time, there's a guy going 108 <clears throat> on a team because he's on a on a artillery truck in East Jesus Nowhere, you know. Yep. And yep. he's ripping people, and and it's costing your team the game. So when you when you're in that death screen, you can accept the bounty, bro. Go get that guy, and if you do, battle pack. That that I really like. That that I think is really really cool. If you know, I, 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 I don't know if it would work within like a regular game or whatever, because that's a pretty, pretty significant change to the overall game design to something like Conquest or whatever, because it's like, well, now we're kind of blending like war pigeons with it, you know. Yeah, um, but no, no, no wall hacks. You know what I mean? No wall hacks. Right. Yeah. No, but you could do it even further, though, Echo, is if you want to get that guy for a battle pack, it will send a message to anybody else who's in the spawn screen. Yeah. So-and-so is accepting a bounty to go get <laughs> the, this person. The or or not get involved, you also you. get a bounty pack. Yes, a pack. yo, yo. So it puts I mean, people together in the same frame. Like, whoa, this guy's going to go get that guy camping? I want to go get that guy camping. So it prevents campers. I'm all for that. Yo, you could get creative like that. Like, look, this guy hasn't moved from this position in 30 minutes, you know? Uh, here's a bounty for him. Like, these things could be actively popping up in your deploy screen, and you can accept them. But just because you accept it, you know, certain ones, that means if you accept it, it's not available anymore because we mm -hmm. can't all of a sudden have everybody a medic, right? Because that's not a bounty then. That um, guy Echo Limits is on a 100 kill streak with a Ben Amor C. I want a battle him. pack to kill him. Yeah, dude, I mean, <laughs> oh, these team, things... Get up. These things are designed, what? Number one, reward the player. Number two, help out with the balance of a server. If DICE isn't going to just let a system decide the balance, and nobody likes being team switched for balance purposes. Nobody likes that. I hate it. I was playing with a bunch of my friends. They're like, yo, we're wrecking. Cool, right? And then I'm on the other team. I'm like, bruh, you know, what is this? I hated that. Nobody likes that. And if I was a game developer, I would focus on minimize bad feeling things about my game, maximize the funness of a game. Mm -hmm. Getting battle packs, doing these things, promoting uh, team play and promoting um, balance in your servers through incentives. That's it. That was my whole, uh, you can think of ideas for battle packs. I know, man, I was, I was brainstorming, bro. All morning. What do you guys think? I do want. I, I do want your opinion on things I, like what other ways can we give battle packs? And if not battle packs, because I understand like maybe Dice doesn't want to give battle packs away for free because it does scraps, cost the money. You know? Precisely. Make it scraps. 
So I know battle pack is, you know, X amount. Make it 50 scraps. Make it 100 scraps. Make it certain things. And if no one's... <laughs> make it five scraps, and I would tear across or the map. Just to, use just just to kill one. someone? Oh, just that is, that is something else. That I, is I would savage. drop whatever I was doing and just be like, those five Cash, scraps let us, Yeah, let us cash in our war bonds to buy scraps. We never use our war bonds. Uh, the war bonds is a silly mechanic. You actually have precisely the amount of war bonds to unlock everything. That's it's 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 totally useless. Right. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. If or you cashed in your war bonds, it means you would never be able to unlock that that flanker tank variant. You're never gonna use. You know. I don't right. know. Right. Um, you're talking about battle packs. Uh, I I want to say. Maybe they could also include something else in the battle pack, like the program that everybody loved, the Battlefield 4, called the Phantom Program. Put a puzzle piece for a Phantom Program as the elite thing to do. It's too late now, hindsight 2020. They could have put a puzzle piece for the Phantom weapon in each of the DLCs so that the last Apocalypse DLC, did you get that puzzle piece in a battle pack? People want a battle pack because they want a chance to get that puzzle piece for the phantom weapon, right? You can't really? get it unless you do it. None Yo. of this, oh, I cheated the assignment, so I got the phantom bow. No, no, no. You actually have to be playing throughout the game's life cycle to get the phantom weapon of Battlefield 1. That's, they should have done that. That's they let that slip. That's interesting. You know what? You got me thinking about it, too. Like... You know, Operations Packs, you get a skin in Operations Battle Pack, but nobody cares about the skin anyway. Everybody's there for the puzzle piece. So why skip? Why not skip the whole crap skins? Like, I don't care about these legends, the distinguished, whatever. The Operations Battle Pack, only puzzle piece. You know what you want? You know what you're going to go for? I wouldn't mind having certain incentives just give you puzzle piece battle packs. Like a whole new version of battle packs. You got your regular, uh, enhanced, superior, this is a puzzle piece pack. Just with puzzle pieces. Cool. Or, that's what they do in Star Wars. Oh, I they got know. different loot crates. They oh, got yeah, hero that's, crates. That's true. Yeah, yeah. But um, we kind of have that too because revisions, you know, revisions are different. But um, the other thing I was thinking about is you, you're, you're onto something with this Phantom program. There is a Phantom program in Battlefield 1. And it's pretty hard to do. And I'm, peop I'm sure a lot of you guys watching right now, um, whether it's the recording or you're watching live, you're probably like, not done with some of the pieces like you have to you have to get the uh dog tags that's that's all that it is so far right guys i'm pretty sure on that so, um so why not have inside battle packs also give you dog tag and if make it pieces to make it harder because pieces you don't want to give tag? it away you can that's do this whole yeah i mean you could do this whole <clears throat> crazy crypto um, bitcoin mining nonsense of finding these little, um, how do you unlock these uh, dog tags? Or, second way to get them is a special battle pack based in any of these incentives. And boom, yeah, sure, you get unique battle pack dog tags too. I think they gave away dog tags in Battle for 4, right? Through battle packs. I don't, I don't know. Remember, I, I don't remember if they did or not. I'm not sure. That's that's one thing I, I don't remember about that game. Dude, you, you blew my mind now. They could be doing way more in battle packs than they already do. Mm -hmm. like right. well, I didn't mean cool. to go off topic about oh, items man. in the battle packs, uh, but you're talking about ways to get n more battle packs, but if you're going to make ways to get more battle packs, then you need to have more incentive to get those battle packs. And I'm thinking... <laughs> Why not have a puzzle piece for a phantom weapon that you don't even say it's a weapon. You just say phantom program puzzle piece. And question that keeps mark. that mystery going. Dude, if it was and, a question mark, that'd be Right. Dope. Question mark puzzle piece. And you're like, what? And then it gives you a clue in the next puzzle piece you get. Starts with a P. Oh, wait a minute. Phantom? What? And then it would get the you know conspiracy theorists like uh, Flackfire going on YouTube to create videos. Oh, whoa, C get... conspiracy theorists. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of Jack Frags. I'm sorry. <laughs> Aliens. Aliens. <laughs> it's Flag's haircut is just going to be all yeah, messed up. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to grow it, grow all my hair out yeah. for just so just, I can do that. Just the nuts. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. That's a great yeah. idea, Mambo. 
it I, I tell you what's interesting um, since we have no idea where where dice is is gonna go for the next battlefield it'll be interesting to see if they expand battle packs a little more because if you sit back and, and you think about you know battlefield 4 um, I think hardline was this way it's hard for me to remember but you had like multiple things in the battle packs right because they had a different system with like attachments yeah yeah you had attachments you in there and stuff attachments like attachments and and that kind of stuff so hopefully we get get something like that and that would be you know even more reason to chase after some of these things if there's more stuff in battle packs or a wider variety of things in there mm. um, I, I like that I mean I'm gonna go out on a limb and say I like boxes with loot in them that you know maybe you don't have to pay money for i i, I like that concept like that's Look, fine right um i think it's an interesting one bringing it full circle guys i think we spoke a lot on these topics i do want to open up this uh podcast to uh one of the things that makes it unique is that there is a discussion with the community not not only do you guys kind of chime into our three topics that we chose uh, you also uh, get the opportunity to ask questions. Now, we will read listener mail first, and after which uh, we will do a open forum chat session with people who are live on here. Um, if you're going to talk, the reminder is uh, at somebody, if you want to ask them a specific question, you know, at Flagfire, at Columbus, at Mambo B in the chat, or at Crew or Cast, that works for all of us. We'll try to quickly address your questions. Now, um, before I get into the um, uh, listener mail, I will remind you guys, if you're watching on YouTube, comment away. Uh, if you are uh, watching on iTunes, the Let's Talk podcast at Gmail is how you can send us these, um, these uh, messages. And you know what I wanted to do? Um, I wanted to kind of look through if you were watching on YouTube and uh, one of your comments is uh, upvoted a lot. You know, if it's a very interesting comment people agree with, I think we'd like to give you a shout out and maybe address it in our future episode. I think that'd be really fun. Uh, I don't know if you agree, Flack. Yeah. Yeah, so um, if you're watching on YouTube and you enjoy someone's comment down there somewhere, upvote it. The most upvoted YouTube comment will be read on this uh, our future podcast and discussed by the crew right here. So that's <laughs> an awesome way to get interactive with us on YouTube. Um, so let's go ahead and read the first email we got and this was from Enza Denino and the question said what do you think is DICE more interested in Star Wars or Battlefield 1? Fellas, lightning round, Flack, what are you thinking? Um, I think it's one of those things that, you know, gosh, that, that, that's a tough question. I, I think from a more practical standpoint, it's going to be, you know, where are, where, where is the audience? You know, are more people playing Battlefront or more people playing Battlefield? You know, obviously Battlefield has its own special part in like a video gamer's heart, but it's also, you know, like it's Star Wars. Star Wars is you know, bigger than video games. It's film, you know, that kind of stuff. And I love Battlefield, but at the same point, it's like, wow, Star Wars is super uh, important and, and interesting so uh, when, me when, as well. when Enza, Enza asks, uh, do you think DICE is more interested in Star Wars or Battlefield? Which one did you say? Or is it even equal or something? I don't know. It's, it's our opinion. It's an interesting it's, question, it's, Enza. So we'd like to chime in. It's probably equal. I think right now they're you know, probably scrambling a little bit with uh, the reception for Battlefront 2, which is its own interesting animal uh but you know I, I i think they're they're looking forward to things and i would say you know they're they're probably pretty excited about about battlefield with whatever the next one is going to be they're they're probably pretty excited about it mambo give us a lightning round enza ask uh is dice more interested in star wars or battlefield one uh well the the developers over at dice they're gamers a lot of them uh they're passionate about what they do they're employees as well of, of EA. So they get put on projects. I, I also am an employee of a bigger corporation. And when you get put on a project, you get passionate about that project to make it the best you can. So right now, uh, they were put on Star Wars, but I think they're also some of the teams working on <clears throat> the next Battlefield. So they're passionate about what they do. So I think it's a catch-22 question right there mm. from the email what are they more passionate about? No. What do they got assignments for? Mm. And they're they're passionate for their assignment. 
So still, still something though. It's like I am like a huge Star Wars fan. So it's like if I was a developer and working on Star Wars, like as as much as I love Battlefield, I would be like, this is like a dream come true to work on a game that's part of the Star Wars universe. That would yeah, be really cool. Yeah, I mean the whole the, the story there, yeah, that alone. I mean the the sales on Star Wars Battlefront would be crazy, you know. I guess the the best part of this whole debacle over the loot crates is the fact that. I guess the consumer does win a little bit because the sales on Battlefront were <laughs> awesome. You can snag that game, play through the single player, and the ending by itself is worth it, you know? Um, my, my, I guess, two cents on this, Enza, is uh, I think they care more about Battlefield. <clears throat> I'm just going to go with that because I feel like DICE, this that's their baby. And Star Wars is someone else's baby. But like you said, like Mambo and Flack are saying, like uh, this probably been given to them. And, and, it's, and it must be... Um, amazing to work on something that's even bigger than your your own like video game. It's it, this is a movie, this is a books and and, and so much lore it's and stuff style. like that. Yeah, it, well, yeah. It probably. I mean, I have no idea. Maybe it is. Um, but uh, I still think that you know Dice would care more about their little baby. You know, it's a battlefield. Yeah. Right. I mean, how often does a video game get a theme park? They're creating the world's largest theme park. For Star Wars in Orlando, I'm not it's, sure I'd want to go to a battlefield theme park. Right, <laughs> like step in line, get hit in the head with a trench mace. It'll be yeah. fun. Yeah, oh, take a picture. <laughs> like, <laughs> just sign this disclaimer first. Yeah. So Enza, I hope that answers your question. We're gonna go into the second question we have, um, and this one is oops, flicking around. Um, this one's by Corey Grant. Uh, says, so we've seen Call of Duty double back many times to World War II era, and their recent one is okay. Uh, he really says he liked the finest hour from PS2 days. Battlefield, in my opinion, makes uh, some of the greatest FPS games, FPS games on the market. So what do you think about DICE trying World War II era game again? Personally, <laughs> seeing uh, what they've been able to do with a BF1 sparks my curiosity. What do you guys think? Uh, so this is for Corey Grant. And Corey, we've got this question many times about what the future of Battlefield is. So we're going to su super lightning round. Hopefully you don't, mad at, don't get mad at that. Because uh, I feel like we've answered that question many times. Uh, but it's still relevant because there might be some people who are uh, tuning in for the first time. Like, um, I th think it's an interesting uh, idea. Um, certainly you look at where Battlefield has gone in the last few iterations. We haven't seen anything... World War II since Battlefield Bad Company 2, I think. Um, no, because, that wasn't... No. Nope. That was Battlefield 1. When, or Battle no, World War II stopped basically in 1942 or something like that. No, because they went back to... They did flashback stuff in Battlefield Bad Company 2. They did they Vietnam. Did. They gave away the M1 Grand and the Thompson as, yeah. as guns, but not In, not, in not Battlefield missions. Bad Company 2, they did. They did. They 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 went to World War II. There was like a submarine. You actually, it's there. Look it up. I swear it. Um, but we haven't seen it for like a long time, right? So it's something. It's like we've got. Um, yeah, I don't think I don't think they have that, dude. Do I need to Google it for you to put put no, a link? No, no. The... You know, there's a live chat. Somebody fact check Black. <laughs> but this is supposed to be a lightning round. Lightning says. Yes. Super Ariola is saying lightning. that was Vietnam flag fire. No, there was a DLC for Vietnam, but in the actual single player of Battlefield Bad Company 2... I think I would have remembered this. No, because that's where they got the one crazy device that they were chasing after in the main story. So it's like Dude, they had to go flag, back and flag, find... Be honest, you just played the game, alright? No, cause this, I didn't. You're, you're too detailed right now. I, no, I, I have not played Battlefield Bad Company 2 for like three years or something like that. See, Hazard says... There was a World War II mission only where the one Japanese one had one of the Alaskan islands, something like that. This seems so made up, and now you have your <laughs> friends in the chat flag. I don't think so, man. I'm it's not buying real. it. <laughs> well, but my point is here, my, my, my point is here, it's like we're in a new, new generation of console. We got, you know, so much powerful graphical capabilities right now that it's like, I'd like to see it go wherever. I mean, as long as it's historical. If it's World War II, it's going to be done in a way that I've never really seen it done before. So if you want historical, not not no. space. 
Yeah. No, I, I want historical. So like World War II, Vietnam. I would personally really like to see Korea. I don't know how that's going to work out politically, but that would be a really compelling setting. That's where I would like it to be. So that's how I feel about it. All but right. where, wherever it is, as long as it's historical, um, I think it'll be received really well because people will be seeing it like they've never seen it before. I, I honestly learned so much about World War One just through this game. And I don't know right. much about Korea, so it would be cool. Mambo, yeah. double lightning I'm, round. Double. I'm, I'm with uh, Flack. I would like anything historical, but the weapons need attachments. I think that's one of the things that keeps gamers going is those little carrot attachments. It's got to have a lot of recoil on the weapon, and the attachments tame those recoils. That'll keep the PC guys engaged, and it'll keep the gamers want to keep gaming. So... Anything historical, but have attachments. Okay. Uh, for me, I would rather see Battlefield Five. I want a modern shooter. That's that. I feel like that would be the safe thing to do for the franchise. They did go on a limb with World War One, and you don't take risks twice back to back. That's not mm -hmm. something that you should do as a big company and as much money as it takes to make a Battlefield title. See, so I'm, I think. I, I'm going to disagree with you there on that because, like, you look at Battlefield 1, what made it work? It worked because nobody knew anything about it. Right. And yeah. so it was a big risk, but that's also why I'm like Korea because it's the Forgotten War. Nobody yeah. knows anything about it. It's a totally new setting. Nobody's ever gone there before. There was, you know, a, the lot, there was a lot that made Battlefield 1 success, too, and its competitors kind of failing on innovating, you know, um, where they well, kind of I stagnated. Mean, setting is a large part of that innovation it's like you go to space it's like yay you know call of duty already went to space like what twice before that or something so it's like no innovation there but if, if you go someplace where nobody has gone before uh Man, it's a bit of a risk but it's something it paid off massively for battlefield yo 1. we got some jokes in the chat people saying civil war but yo okay you you, you, you know what <laughs> Make it a $30 Battlefield multiplayer only Civil War, six maps, that's it. No, it just no, be no Battlefield DLC. Bayonet Simulator is, Whatever. is what it would Yo. be. What about, be cool. um, what about the Panama War where they were down there in the jungle with the bad company telling a story? You know, that whole, the Panama Canal and the fighting and the, uh, the cartels down there, they could easily do something like that. The <laughs> Iran-Contra scandal, whatever. People in the chat, now they're talking about Wild West. All right. All right, guys. I hope, uh, Hopefully, Corey, that answers your question. We could do some, uh, have some enthusiasm for the historical aspect. I think a modern one would be cool with me. Um, that's just our take. Lightning, double, triple lightning. All right, that's it. <laughs> now we're going to move on to uh, the last part of this podcast, of course. Uh, it is the... Um, live commentary from you guys so if you have a question at somebody uh just individually or you have a question for uh um all of us at cast we will do our best to answer it in a triple lightning fashion <laughs> yes love this just <laughs> any more emails no that's it uh we just got a, a email from a couple of people but i don't try to incorporate brand new emails so um this was before the yeah i see you guys emailing me now <laughs> it's like all right thanks but like i said um we will get into those emails next podcast you're gonna have to wait on that one let's get into some of this we got a question for a at Flagfire. thoughts on more variety in theaters with the dlc some fighting for example took place in german uh new guinea which is also a rarely portrayed theater when it comes to world war one um, Ryan Brooks, I think a lot of people um, really would like to see more expanded kinds of theaters. But the issue that you run into with that is like, oh, well, if we go there, then we have to build this faction, right? So you've got a lot of people right now, because I read all the comments on my videos, they're always like Serbia, Bulgaria, you know, you want to have those things in there. But if you look at something like that, then it's like, well, DICE has to build the uniforms for those factions. Um, and that's something it's like, they probably won't do it just for one map. You know, I, I was really surprised when we got 
really two different factions for that Russian DLC. That's we true. got, you know, the White Army and the Red Army. I, that was crazy. I did not see that coming. I thought they were going to bring... They did uh, so much content. ...the Turkish into that, you know, get the Russo-Turkish conflict stuff going because it, it, it would save work, right? They would just be able to reuse the, the Turkish uniforms. Um, but if you've been following uh, the channel for a long time, you know, aside from New Guinea, one of the places I'd really like to see... Uh, DLC maps would be in Germany, East, East Africa, um, where you actually had the uh, the Askari soldiers, uh, you know, the the German colonial soldiers fighting against uh, the British and the Belgians, and you know, waging this kind of unconventional uh, kind of warfare down there. And there are some really interesting battles. It's a really interesting setting because it's going to be you know, uh, kind of jungly and, you know, just That's very cool. visually interesting. Uh, so I, I would love to see that kind of stuff, you know, take us to places we haven't been. I'm totally behind the idea of like, if apocalypse is going to be, you know, big and over the top and unique, uh, yeah. take us new, new places. Like yeah, yeah. Africa really look at, gets uh, talked about when China, it, when right? it's, or China. All right. All yeah. Right. Siege, siege of, uh, we have, a, would we have be more... an interesting one. We have a couple more questions. We got Flanagan's, uh Acru, aim assist nerfed too much. Why change the most fundamental of game mechanics this late? Uh, well, aim assist is, nerfed too much? Yeah, they, they nerfed, they nerfed they, it. They did tweak it. Um, I don't know about and too much. And they just much. take it out? <laughs> that would be interesting would, if, uh, they, uh, if, if, if they did that. Um, yeah. The... I'm not sure why they changed it so late. I, I think they figured out oh, it's probably a little bit too overpowered, which to me is fine. It's just something I hate having to relearn, um, you know, kind of the, the boundaries of that uh, of that effect or, or, or that mechanic, you know, because it's like you put in hundreds of hours into this game, right? And now they change something that it's like as intuitive to you as like muscle memory, All right? right. I'm going to go on a limb and say that this is a design, uh, intentional design. So when you release your game, think about it this way. You release your game, there's going to be a lot of brand new people who've never played your platform before. So you make your game simpler, more aim assist. And as time goes on, the people who remain are the people who want to continuously play it. So you remove that and you nerf it down. You see what I'm saying? Um, I, I'm, I'm going to play off of that and hopefully say... You know, because, I mean, I use aim assist. I know other people who don't, but it's like I play on console. Everybody uses it. I'm not going to not play with that. You know, it, it's not unfair for me to do that. Um, but I'm hoping that uh, the reduction in aim assist, because admittedly, I do think it, it was a little bit too powerful, is going to transfer directly into the mechanics of whatever the next battlefield is. So oh. it'll it'll be more skill focused, more you know that kind of stuff. I've uh, been a, kind I've of been walk a, it back a little. I see what you mean. I've been a strong proponent of one of these ideas. Is uh, Nintendo doesn't make a Mario game that makes Mario feel different. You know the Mario feels always the same, and Dice has struggled with that. With every iteration of Battlefield, they've always kind of tweaked designs, and they kind of the the community. Thankfully, we push on them and tell them like. What happened? Why are you giving me aim acceleration? You know, like Battlefield 1 had aim acceleration. Like Battlefield 4 didn't. Why? And then they removed it and now my controls feel just like Battlefield 4 did. That should be your core. Mm -hmm. Move on with that. Um, right. There was another thing from Arioli talking about um, <coughs> PC being different than console. And I've had a chance to play a little bit of PC lately. And just because I downloaded DualShock 4 or whatever, I'm literally playing PC with my... PlayStation 4 controller, all right? But the, the reality on there I found is people are more accurate over a great distance where they would be would not be on console. So I'm, I'm having long range, long range engagements and they're actually hitting me where I'd be like giving them the jukes and stuff, you know, with the sliding uh, and they wouldn't be hitting me on console. So, you know, the whole aim assist there, even with that help, you know, the differences on the, on the PC there are like interesting and his comment was that if it, if it feels like a whole new game and i would say no but um there there are there's that distinction there i have to play some more to, to really get into the nitty-gritty there all right at crew uh the legacy 10 uh, what about battlefield N napoleonic wars mm. 
<laughs> Napoleonic. I, and Napoleon. I think anything prior to World War One is is just never going to happen because you run into issues with reloading times and and that kind of stuff. It's just not right. Not, right. not 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 sexy from a game development standpoint, right? <laughs> I'm just imagining the weapon stats. It's like rate of fire one per minute. You know, Dice does pride themselves on their reload animations. They could be making some beastly it, reload animations. They <laughs> could a musket. <laughs> yeah, like, pour the black powder. Put the ball. <laughs> yeah, you gotta bite off the bite off yeah. the, the you know the mini ball fabric. Ramrod the freaking ball all the way down. Come on, crazy. Muskets. Uh, so I don't think that's gonna happen. I guess Black is right on that one. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, at cast Pastrana one nine nine. I would like to see something in the Battlefield twenty eighteen server browser that shows you yes. the ticket stand on a server. Please. I mean, how often can I happen if you want to play on a specific match which uh, ends exactly when you join? How about you? Yes. That would be nice. Yeah, one one hundred percent. And and we've said that before on the podcast where we're like, we would really love to see something like that, so you know. I mean, because it it used to be really frustrating before I, I got the the Xbox One X because it's like some of the games would take forever to load. You you got an Xbox and, One X? Yeah. Oh and snap! It's. It, it, it was such a pain to like go through the press of like, oh, loading Sinai Desert, you know, and then it's like five minutes later, you don't get into it. It just starts loading, you know, the next map. So it's like you go 10 minutes trying to get into a game because you happen to join at the, you know, the last second uh, of when that match was over. So that would be really, really nice if they could put that in the game. I, I don't know if they've done that with other Battlefield games before, but that would be amazing. Yeah, there's, uh, there's, we did once talk about improvements to server browser, but it's been a long time since we talked about it, and this podcast has been a year plus in the, in the making now. Um, so it would be nice to revisit that, especially since the new game coming out. That might be on my list of like things I hope they improve with the new Battlefield. Or, or they could probably still improve in this one. Mm. Uh, we have at Flagfire. Talk German to us. Was soll ich auf Deutsch sagen? There you go. Oh dang, man! <laughs> I, I I I know this is a clean stream. I just said so many exploded. No, I didn't. No, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we pride um, ourselves on making sure the conversations are safe for all audiences. Uh, <laughs> never back down. Before that said, would it be historical if there were horse-drawn buggies during the war? I mean, it's like yeah, the, they they used horses a lot for that. That that would be interesting to see in the game. Um, you know, having coach wagons. <laughs> Yeah, like a, a, some, something pulling around artillery or something like that. Um, I would like to see camels. Something oh, yeah, we out did there. talk Camel about cavalry. That. that was a question on a chat session last time, right? What kind of other animal? Yeah, I said I want the zebra skin for my cavalry. <laughs> yeah. And then and then your horse kind of shrinks, so it's kind of actually a zebra. <laughs> or a donkey. <laughs> Um, Don we Donkey would have gone with the would have gone with the Turning Tides Gallipoli. Uh, right. at, stuff thing. at cast, uh, Mahater one says, "I cast make respawning like BF4, accept or decline. Respawning, accept or decline. I think reviving is what he's saying. You can do the same already, right? Uh no, you can't decline if you get revived. So you just yeah. die. It's the yeah. same thing. Well." Right. I think he's talking about like how it used to be where somebody would run up and revive you and you could say, accept the revive, yes or no. Um, that's pretty nice. It's interesting, though. Like I just I don't get revived nearly as much in Battlefield 1 as, as I did in something like Battlefield 4 uh, for whatever reason. But I did appreciate the ability where it's like, if I'm going to get Black, you just need to stream more. shot where, <laughs> where, wherever I am, if, if I'm going to get shot as soon as I get revived, like I want to be able to to uh, to decline that. So every, every time like, you stream, there'll be like four four medics just running around behind you, D double syringe. All right. Uh, <laughs> at Flagfire, that was German skill. Seems good from Prashana. Yeah, good to know. Uh, we have we have still like a good five minutes. If you have a question, says oh, we do have one. Legacy 10, at crew, what about uh, to put the Korea, Vietnam, and even Middle East conflicts as a Cold War era and put that all in one game? 
I think that worked well for Call of Duty with Black Ops 1, didn't it? I mean, I, I think they went to a lot of different places with that. They did World War II, I think, and then it went to uh, Vietnam, and then it uh, played around with some more modern themes, I think, with that. Uh, that I, I enjoyed that, because that was like, take me to all these different places I haven't been before. Um, you know, not specifically World War II, but there were other things in there where you went to uh, like Latin America and, and that kind of stuff. And, and that was pretty cool because never, never had to do that. And I really like the way I'm going to say something nice about Call of Duty. I really like the way in uh, uh, Black Ops 1 or Black Ops 2 where you actually saw actual historical figures. Um, so you actually interacted with people that you know from the history books, right? They weren't just some, you know, like made up name person, yeah. right? So it would be really cool if like in the war stories for Battlefield 1, you were playing and like Sergeant York is beside you or something like that, you know, be like, wow, that's, you know, I know that guy from the, from the history books. He did this, he did that. Um, it makes it that much more interesting. Um, so that'd be cool. Um, I like the war heroes that they kind of pulled out of Battlefield One when they did the campaign, Lawrence of Arabia. Oh yeah, there was a, yeah, it was nice. there was a lot more war heroes than they've touched on. I mean, there was hundreds and hundreds of war heroes. Like even the, the guy, guy there's the an second. Australian right war hero there. I forget what yeah. his name was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the, the guy the that got the second Fisher. most kills in the air. You know, stuff like that. There was a lot of guys that they didn't even touch on, so they could do the next battlefield kind of like that, tell war stories of people, because every war, every conflict has had a hero. Yeah, so, I kind of kind of prefer what they did with Battlefield 1, rather than trying to do this one story, somehow it fits mm -hmm. all these narratives, and, you know... I, I like that. I think the I, little war stories, a little bit longer, rather than like 40-minute stories, would have been nice to have like a two-hour story, and give me four of them eight hours that's it boom done uh i think that is a cool thing because then you can expand on it and actually have single player dlc be yeah. cool. get like a story or two before the next battlefield right. you know i would buy single player battlefield expansion dlc i don't know that's <laughs> i me. would that's that's something I, I really got my fingers crossed because they did um single player dlc for battlefront 2. yep and it so was I'm good. Like, and it was good. I, I haven't played it yet. <laughs> but it's um, something it's like I really, really would like to see a, a larger emphasis on single player type stuff. Um, because that's all about the setting and the history, you know. So it, it'd be really cool to see that even in Battlefield 1 if they come out of nowhere and they're like, hey, we're going to give you a, a nice little short war story here as, as part of Apocalypse. Uh, which I don't think they'll do, but it would be nah, it would be pretty it would be nice. Wishful thinking. Well, those are our hopes, right? Mm -hmm. Um, we got some questions randomly for Flack. Uh, it just says, "Do you watch Black Mirror?" But that's not <laughs> Battlefield related, so moving on. <laughs> uh, I thought I saw one. I think someone said uh, towards the crew. Let me scroll up on my PC because it's not on the feed now. Uh, but there was a. There was a question from somebody about... Oh, there it is. Desert Driftwood says, Have you been uh, having problems with the matchmaking placing you in EU servers on a quick match? And honestly, I do not quick match anymore. Now that operations in the server browser, I only server browse. Yeah, um, I, I can't really speak to that either because anytime I play, I deliberately server browse. Like, I... I, I want to get in there and play a particular map. Like, I don't want to take the chance and be like, oh, I put me in Albion, and then I have to wait for it to load before I leave. You know, it's like, no, I want to go play St. Quentin Scar or Nivel Knights or Priesthood Tour or something like that. So that's that's exclusively how I do that now. Nice. Can we ask a question to the chat? Feel free. Oh, turn in the okay. table. Oh, man. snap. Favorite. I didn't know this was it's a new year, new podcast. <laughs> there we go. What's the favorite gaming snack of Echo and Flack and Mambo? And the chat. What's what's your favorite gaming snack? Okay. So you asked all of us. Is. All of us. I'm I'm just all about the different uh the different beverages. Like I always have oh. like four four beverages per podcast. So you're a beverage guy and a bathroom yeah. guy. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> 
if I was to eat something, bro, Snickers ice cream. I had is that what Echo eats? Snickers ice cream. I, I do like that one, but that's that's during chat sessions at the end. You know, if I did a oh okay good good day. No, I'm joking. Um, you know what though? A good lifesaver gummy goes a long way. Every time I revive someone, I eat a lifesaver. Oh okay. I like pizza rolls. Pizza, pizza rolls. rolls. Yeah. Was it was some some streamers lately were sponsored by Hot Pockets, and I thought it was the funniest thing on the for <laughs> disrespect. I think was yeah. I think Dark Darkness four two nine was sponsored by Hot Pockets for a little bit. I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, yeah he I, doesn't I just, even eat them. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. I, I honestly, uh, you know, when you, when you say pizza rolls and Hot Pockets, I I don't think I've ever heard someone above the age of fifteen eat those things. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I like how. Uh, <laughs> Nim, Nim in the chat is saying your your rage snack echo is Ferrero Rocher. Yeah, you gotta have chocolate when you're mad, you know. Yeah, I like I like, I like weird that. peanut M and M's. Those are weird, awesome. Weird combination of things for me is Dr Pepper and animal crackers. Those two things together, I don't know what happens, but it's magic. Oh, Doesn't sound natural. magical, no. <laughs> that's got to do some weird like, like giving a seagull a freaking Alka Seltzer kind of death. <laughs> 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 they're delicious. I don't... <laughs> like drink, like eating a whole thing of Mentos and then drinking Diet Coke. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Next time, do that on stream, Echo. See, uh, see how many views you get. Got your nose and everything. I get out of here. All right, last question. We got one. Um, Aku, I hope Dice have that sniper sweet spot thing for the next battlefield. Oh, Dice, leave that. How do you guys feel about the sniper sweet spot? And that will be the last question. I... Um, well, you do lose foot pounds when you shoot an ammo at long range. Uh, but our weapons these days are made for mild distance knockdown power with a 50 cal. So I don't think a sweet spot thing is good for a sniper gun. I think I... it might might stay, but only on the basis that... I think from here, wherever it is that we go, we're going to get something more modern. Right. And it's Increase like with, it, make it zero feet to 200 meters or something like that. No, well, they did it because of gameplay purposes, not realism. I, I what, what I'm trying to say is that where, wherever we go, I, I think the amount of bolt actions that we're going to have probably isn't going to be as many as we have in Battlefield 1. So right. I think part of the reason they implemented the sweet spot system was to try and make all of those bolt actions feel different right, right. to have them have a yeah you know, something something that sets them apart because a lot of them are like you know five round bolt actions it's like yeah, how do you take a gun that you know is you identical to four right. other guns and make it more interesting so where wherever we go whatever setting we get i i, I think they'll stay but they won't be that Snipers. you know strange to have a uh I would only I recommend that they tweak it a little bit. I know it's the purpose of a sweet spot is to um, differentiate weapons. And if you look back, you boot up Battlefield Four, you boot up Battlefield Three, and you're like, I want to snipe. It doesn't matter what sniper you pick up; they're all the same. Really, really all the same. It's so minute. It's like uh, whatever. It's, right? it's like people just pick the ones that are one hit kill. <laughs> you're like you, you get the 50 BMG, and you're like, that's it. No other snipers yeah. matter. I'm just using this one. So I like that the sweet spot, it differentiates it, but I don't think it should be one shot kill. I think a sweet spot should hit 95, tops. It's a little cheesy when you when you're one one tapping somebody at a certain distance mm -hmm. because it's it's more accidental. You're not rewarding skill. You're rewarding yeah. accidents happening on a battlefield. I didn't mean to stand here and he you know and look this far and he just yeah. happened to be there you know I, it's it's not really like how it works especially since in battlefield uh one you can't tell distances whereas in maybe in a modern battlefield a sweet spot might make more sense because you might have a visor or built into the thing remember what was that uh, attachment you can b put on a range finder in battlefield 4 mm -hmm. something like that yeah i think so yeah, so you would know you're within your sweet spot or not, and then you can make the judgment: Am I going for a headshot to one shot kill, or am I going for a body shot? But I feel body shots cheesy. I I'm I only like if you're gonna snipe headshots. The only way to one shot kill you. I know it doesn't make sense, Mambo. You know you're right. 
you know, you're taking a 50 cal point blank range, there should be a hole the size of this in this, this man's chest, right? I mean, it's going to tear you a new one. Yeah, but if it buzzes by you, it'll take your mem- it'll take a limb off. Yeah, I mean, not even have to hit you. Your yeah. skin will get ripped right off. But yeah. that's just the realism and, and uh, the game plan. And one of my favorite things about Battlefield as a franchise is it's when you look at the spectrum of what's real, what's gameplay, Battlefield is perfectly in the middle. And I think that's why it's so fun. Right. All right. Um, thank you for all the questions, guys. It's been an awesome time uh, having this discussion with the community and uh, to everyone bringing their topics in. Fellas, let's hit them with the sign-offs. Work these fine people find you when you're not on this podcast black uh for me uh if you want to check out some interesting videos particularly here on apocalypse dlc and some potential stuff here lately it's youtube.com slash uh flagfire gaming and then uh, i'll probably be streaming on twitch maybe a little bit later today twitch.tv slash flagfire awesome um mambo where can they find you Yeah, uh, if you're tuning in or listening to the podcast, this is uh, our first podcast of 2018. I'm one of your co-hosts, Mambo underscore B on Twitch. And uh, you could also get replies right away to me on Twitter, Mambo underscore B-E-E on Twitter. Awesome. And I was your host, Echo Limits. That's spelled E-K-O-L-I-M-I-T-S. I'm a Twitch.tv streamer. You're watching uh, possibly live on my channel. This is where we record the uh, podcast. Uh, so find me at twitch.tv slash echo limits. And uh, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, if you ever want to just chat, that's the best place to reach me. And that's also E K O L I M I T S. We will be back in a month's time, most likely. Um, it's uh, probably what we're, what we're going to be doing. Sometimes things slightly change and you can once again find out all that information on Twitter from asking us in our in our live streams, in our YouTube channels. We're very accessible. It's not like, you know, uh, it's hard to get in touch with us. Um, so, yeah, uh, shoot us an email, the Let's Talk podcast at Gmail. Um, that would be greatly appreciated. We love reading them and finding out what you guys have to say. And finally, the sign offs that miss anything. Podcast will be back. One nope. month after the next two new maps coming Yo, out. We mm-hmm. will get two new maps. We barely touched upon it, but we will we will once they release. Thanks for watching guys. Thumbs up from me. Have a great time. Later. <laughs>